Hey folks, welcome back to Straight Talk Whiskey. I'm Nick here with it as always. Thanks for joining us for episode number 101. And in the spirit of St. Patrick's Day, which is coming up around the corner now, we've got a new expression from Tullamore Dew. So we've got the Tullamore Dew Caribbean Rum Cask Finish. So some of you have been mentioning that you've seen it pop up in local stores around you and it's becoming more and more available now. I got this shipped in from New York so that's how I was able to get it because there was no way that it was going to be on my shelves out here just because the selection has not been that fruitful. So just going to pour a little bit. I've had a sip of it but not too much so I want to make sure I give it enough time to breathe just a little bit. And so why the rum, rum, this Caribbean rum cask finish? It has certainly been done before by other people. It's not a new thing. And certainly with Irish whiskey, you'll notice if you've had the Teeling small batch, they do some finishing in rum cask as well. But this has a little bit more connection with the story or theme that Tullamore is trying to go for. And this is honoring the, the Irish folks of history that had a really intricate part in the development of rum throughout the world. So, of course, you have and there's an, a relatively new line of rums out there called Wild Geese, which I believe was sort of the nickname given to some Irish folks who had fled, you know, persecution in 17th century um, indentured servitude. Um, was certainly a thing down there and we all know that rum has sort of this dark history surrounding it because it was associated so much with things like the slave trade and piracy of course and as we know from history there certainly were Irish pirates they probably made up a good chunk of the population of pirates at the time maybe somewhere around 15 percent or something like that so we know they're very fond of their spirits, and so they play a huge role in the development of rum. And there's certainly some Irish rums out there which I found interesting. Some have even won awards recently. So that's what this is hearkening to. Um, and so the XO, what that's giving a nod to or mention to is the type of cast that the rum um, not the type of cast that the rums are aged in, but how long the rum is aged. So this is typical for things like rum, cognacs, and that sort of thing. You might see certain, the acronyms like the VSOP and certain variations there. The XO means that it's been aged for at least six, uh, six years. So the XO standing for very old, or six years isn't that old to me, but... So that's what that stands for. Um, they've been aged in Demerara rum cast, uh, finished rather. So you have your standard Tullamore Dew that was finished in here. And that's the thing that you really have to understand is that it's just a finish in rum cast. People expect to open this, you know, they pour a little bit of it and they're like expecting more of those rum flavors, I guess. And the same with the the cider cask finishes, I think a lot of people expected cider in the bottle, which it, first and foremost is Irish whiskey, which you have to remember, because it's just not the same thing, apples and oranges there. So, anyway, one of the things that I was happy about coming off of the, the cider cask finish, which, much to my disappointment, was only bottled at 40% ABV, um, they've actually bumped this up to 43%. ABV. So having the, the 86 proof, a little 6 proof higher than standard was nice to have. So let's go in for the nose. Now the first thing that you get right off the bat is really sugary notes. You get licorice, molasses, definitely a lot of, of vanillas. Um, but what really powers through on the nose are these tropical fruits. Um, just some real exotic fruit notes in there. So there's definitely some, some mango, a lot of grapefruit notes. I was even picking up 
olive, just the scent of olives, and I'm not sure exactly why that is, maybe a little hint of coconut. Olive's one of the only foods that I really do not like at all, even if I, you know, try as I may, have never liked it since a kid, so maybe that stood out right away as having, and it's not a bad nose, but just picking that particular scent out of there. Right, because all of the aromas that we're smelling here, you know, if you've never s understood and smelt what clove smells like, then you're probably not going to go and say that, ooh, I'm smelling a hint of clove in there, and I'm scenting a little bit of, you know, Labrador Retriever mixed with pomegranate fruit. Like, that's just ridiculous, but anyway, you're going to... The point of that whole thing is that you're going to nose based on experiences that you've had in the past, whether they be foods that you've had before, or just different things, places you've been, where you've smelled, things like that. Um, like a campfire. Obviously, we're not tasting a campfire, but you get a lot of that wood smoke, the, you know, all that sort of thing, the caramel notes, so all that sort of thing. But anyway, getting back to this. Now one of the things right off the bat that's not intrinsically tied to what I'm tasting yet, but is that I notice, because I love Tullamore do all of their expressions, and certainly just the, the standard blend, you'll notice that the Caribbean rum cask finish has a lot more body to it. It's a little bit more oily in nature, which I absolutely love. I think it's a great pairing with this whiskey, because you just get a little bit more grit to it, you know, you're able to almost chew it a little bit more. It's got this uh, sugary molasses type texture to it, which I really enjoy. So in terms of the taste, you get the, your traditional Tullamore Dew, the sweet notes, vanilla, creamy maltiness, fresh baked bread, grassy notes, it's very fruity, fragrant, light on its feet. But then you get these beautiful tropical notes that I mentioned that come in there. The mango, the grapefruit, that sort of thing. Not so much on the olives, which I'm happy for in the taste, but just really like cane sugar just really has a great connection to the rum casks. And really, in the body of it, it's similar to traditional Telemore in the terms of the notes that I already mentioned. And the other tropical notes from the rum cast finish seem to coat the outside of the tongue, which is interesting. Because you're picking up more of those sweeter notes, um, and it's just a really fantastic pairing. You know, I honestly think that just those, you know, the little bit bump up there in proof helps it so much. I think it keeps all the flavors together and intact. I feel like if I were to add water to this, I might lose it really quickly. So that's why I'm not going to add water. If I did, I might add just a drop or two, really being um, careful with it. Um, be stingy with it because you don't want to... You don't want to ruin it too quick, so give yourself a decent glass of the juice and then, you know, just plop a couple drops in there and see see if anything changes. But I'm completely content with, with how it is. I don't, you know, agree with some of the naysayers that are out there and say they don't taste as much as the, the rum in there because, again, it's Irish whiskey first and foremost, and it's only finished in those um, Demerara rum casks. But what would be interesting is to get some of that rum um, that was previously in those casks and pair that alongside this. I'm going to see if I can find, do a little snooping around and maybe you can help me out if you can find 
something either if you're a rum drinker which I feel like I really need to be because I do enjoy rum I just don't have it enough and when I go to find a selection of rum you know it's traditionally the your typical you know you see Captain Morgan and um, Kraken which isn't even a true rum um, more of a flavored rum but anyway if you can get some of those I hate to say craft rums, but um, there are some of those out there, and certainly on the East Coast where I was before, I was tasting some of those, which are fantastic. So anyway, getting back on the thread line, if you can find something that would be a great pairing to this and or the actual um, rum that was previously in the cast that is used to finish this whiskey, that would be much appreciated. I would love to do that comparison in the future, but anyway. I'm going to go ahead and pour a little bit more of this and leave you to it. If you're going to drink, as always, drink responsibly, and see you next week.